My name is Dylan Quach. I'm 14 years old and I live in a biracial family. Ever since I can remember, even as a little kid, my parents have raised me in two distinct ways, Chinese and Filipino. Though they were different, they were kind of similar at the same time. My dad, Tong Quach, is a refugee from Vietnam coming to America in search for better opportunities. My mom, Geraldine Loda, is a first generation Filipino American with her parents coming here for better opportunities as well. I think these two backgrounds really influence me in my religion, my tradition, my way of life, what I value, and most importantly, I think is my future. I came to America around the early 80s. I was around maybe eight, nine years old. I'm Chinese, born in Vietnam. We left Vietnam because my family was concerned the uh, instability after the Vietnam War. We smuggled ourselves out of Vietnam around 78 or 79 in boats. We also known as boat people. We went through starvation, piracy, and for the hope of a better life in America. Well, uh, my parents came here. They immigrated here um, in the 1970s. Uh, they were just married, and um, they all they pretty much had with them was their faith and education, and a search for a better life. So about a year later, I was born and I am the first generation Filipino American. Through my childhood, uh, I have friends, we ride bikes around the neighborhood. Our family speak very little English, so it's very hard for us. But typically, I help my family a lot, you know, learn, I learned pretty much very early in, you know, help my uncle out when I was a kid, you know, fixing house, you know, fixing a car, uh, learn how to cook for my grandma. So I was pretty much advanced than typical kid. My child was, was pretty typical. Uh, my father was an engineer. My mom was a piano teacher and I was an only child. Um, they were a little bit overly protective of me and since they were also um, devout Catholics, um, they put me in Catholic school. Um, growing up, I had pretty much everything you'd, a little girl would want. I had a lot of toys and a lot of dresses. I was uh, born and raised Catholic. Um, I was baptized, had my communion, and my confirmation. Um, and also education was a really big important part of my childhood growing up. My parents, um, ever since I was five and in kindergarten, I was always put in a, in a private school. And they pretty much, you know, always placed the importance of education he told me how to, you know, how hard I had to study and, and just pretty much to do well in school. For us, it was very hard. We worked very hard for everything. The one thing I learned from my childhood was that I do not take things for granted. That's the most important. I learned that, I learned to appreciate, um, a lot that I had. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I had a lot of opportunities that I think most kids didn't have. Um, and I knew that my parents, um, they really, you know, struggled to and sacrificed to give me everything that I needed. Though my dad was born in Vietnam, his ancestors were from China, which instilled in him a rich Chinese background. Because of this, he was a Buddhist, so every year we celebrate the Spring Festival or Chinese New Year. 
We always have a huge feast with my dad's side of the family, praying, eating, and celebrating the coming of a new year. This is very important to the Chinese people and the culture. I wasn't raised Buddhist, though. I was raised Catholic, or my mom's religion. The Catholic faith is a huge part of my life, and my mom and grandparents made sure I knew who God was and worshipped him. During the Chinese New Year, I mean, a fa everybody in the family, we get together, we prepare a big meal, uh, I would say like eight, nine dishes, you know, to symbolize luck and longevity. Family and friends sit together, have, you know, big dinner, and afterward we hand out uh, the red envelope, uh, lacy for good luck for the following year. Yeah, so for our culture, it's basically family, friend, very oriented. Buddhism is very important for us. Uh, we do a lot of meditation, prayer. Uh, we pray to a dead ancestor, ancestor, you know, and God. Uh, we do that, you know, a lot. Every few months, we there's some kind of occasion, some kind of you know prayer occasion that we we worship the God. Well, the Filipino culture has had a lot of influences um, from Spain from Asia, from India, um, and from America as well. Um, I'm being born Filipino-American, I would say I have, I was instilled with Filipino values mixed in a lot with American culture. Uh, my parents raised me to have the highest respect for the elders and also, you know, families, extended families, those were really important that's a very important component in um in filipino culture we celebrate a lot of the big holidays like um the birth of christ uh which you know which is christmas or um the death of christ uh which is easter but then also you know growing up i also had a lot of the american culture influenced uh in me as well you know, we also did a lot of celebrating and decorating and preparing for a lot of the major holidays that, uh, that we have here. Um, Filipino food, that's also a big part of the culture. Um, Filipino food is something that's also very important to Filipinos. It's a way to enjoy and spend time together. Um, and unfortunately, um, being Filipino-American, I did not pick up uh, Filipino cooking, but um, you know, a lot of the times if we have um, you know, our cravings or desires to eat food, we go to the local markets, or my mom, who is a really good cook, always manages to you know, have us over for dinner or brings food over. So that's pretty much the Filipino culture. I want my son to have a good education and a future uh, opportunity that I didn't have. Uh, I want him to have a, I want him to become a better version of me. Um, I want for my son also to have the same opportunities I had growing up. I want him to have a good education, to be successful in life. Um, also as a parent, I want him to, you know, obviously, you know, get married, have kids, pretty much be happy. Um, I want for him to pretty much grow up with the values that we've instilled in him. And most of all, I want him to lead his life following God's path. 
even with these cultures and traditions influencing me in my life, this isn't the most important. The most important thing is how my parents teach me. What they teach me is right, what I should value, what I need to do to succeed, what I shouldn't do, how to be the best person I can be. Not only do they want me to succeed, but they want me to do so much more than that. They want me to surpass them and grow better than they did. These religions and cultures and traditions, they're great, but they have taken what those religions and what, even what their parents have taught them, they've taken it and they've passed it down to me and refined it and really instilled it in me. And they want me to have what they didn't have and just do what they didn't do. They want to make me a better version of them. They don't want me to not have what they didn't have, but want me to have everything. They want me to finish what they have begun, and the only way that this is possible is to use what they have instilled in me since I was young. All these talents, all these gifts that they've given me, all this advice, my strengths and my weaknesses, I have to utilize them to overcome the obstacles and challenges that I have in life and to finish what my parents have started, which is my life.